minimal. So here's a little bit of a comparison between the 11 through 13 and the 14 and 15 models. Hi guys, I'm Dan with Six Monkeys. Today we're going to be installing the Primate Upper Bumper on this 2011 Grand Cherokee. Uh, it'll be the same process from the 2011 to the 2013. Uh, it'll vary a little bit with the other model years. Overall the process will be the same. and. Uh, Hopefully we can get it done here and you guys can just follow the process and, and do it yourselves. This should help out a lot. All right, so this uh, Grand Cherokee already has the uh, lower front lower guard installed. It's stubbed. Uh, he was anticipating already having the upper bumper go in, so he made sure to order the stubbed version. Uh, it's really important to do that because if you have these wings hanging out on the longer version, the wider version, uh, it just doesn't work as well. So to start this process, we're going to pop the hood and we're gonna remove the washer fluid reservoir. Um, it'll be, at the end of the process, we're going to reinstall the aluminum one that comes with the upper bumper. But the first thing we need to do is remove the washer fluid tank, and that's gonna clear anything from the inside. And then from there, we'll be able to kind of set some pieces over top of this bumper, mark it out with uh, an Expo marker that wipes off easy, and uh, it will kind of be able to determine where we need to cut this. Uh, and that's uh, where we're going to start off at. Pretty easy. One thing to note is our, our washer fluid reservoir uh, is not compatible with the, the headlight washers. So the ones that have the headlight washers have a secondary pump and we just don't, they're, they're so few and far between that we just, we don't accommodate that. So it's one of the things that you just got to forego. And uh, really there's not room for it with the upper bumper anyway, so. Hey, get yourself uh, a cheese balls container. Don't be like Nick. <laughs> Fix your oily sh All right, so we've uh, marked our lines with the Sharpie, or the uh, Expo marker, and we ran some tape lines here and mimicked it on the other side. And we're gonna cut on the top side of this tape. Um, this up in here is gonna change a little bit depending on what model year you have. These headlights on the 11 to 13 are a little bit taller. Uh, the other ones are a bit shorter. So the tape line will change a little bit up in this corner, but for the most part, it'll, it'll pretty much be the same. Uh, we used inch and a half wide tape here, and it worked out really well. Um, I, I put about a half inch up in this corner here. So for this line, I went about a half inch away from the headlight, and I ran it down to the corner of where this, this body angle changes. That seemed like a pretty good, pretty good line to work off of, and it set this line nice. Uh, then I went down about three quarters of an inch here, and I ran this tape line so that this side of the tape is right at the corner of the, the fog light contour. And that set this line pretty nice. And then from there, I just ran this tape across the front, about a half inch below the bend mark. Now again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's, it's probably leaving more material than what we need to leave, but it's easier to take more material off than to try and add material back on. All right, so once you get the, the top masked off tape, uh, just go ahead and remove it. It's really simple to remove. There's a couple 10 millimeter uh, bolts in either side up in the fenders. You're gonna remove those. There's a couple pop tabs in the fenders, remove those, and then the entire upper fascia will just pop off. It's all little pop tabs, really easy. So now that we have this off, we can go ahead and select some tools to uh, trim this. 
Uh, there's a variety of tools you can use. Um, I've seen people use just plat, just a, a razor knife and score it good, keep going over it until it cuts through. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt, takes some time. Uh, it's kind of dangerous. Uh, you can also use a, a small die grinder with a cutoff wheel, and that cutoff wheel will cut it pretty nice. You can use a four inch grinder, cutoff wheel, pretty easy. And these are our electric metal snips. You can find this at Harbor Freight, it's pretty cheap. Um, makes it really easy. We found that this cuts plastic pretty well, so we're gonna uh, give it a shot here and see how it goes. Now that we have that cut off, we have a few more pieces that we need to remove before we start applying stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those parts and then uh, we'll be good to go. Um, these parts right here, we need to pull. Um, I think they're just little 10 millimeters, there's two of them. Pull both of those. Applied these outer wings. Um, very easy. Just remove the two bolts. You're going to reuse them. Um, they're right on the radiator subframe. Um, they're usually pretty tight to get in and out. They have Loctite on them. Uh, impact works good. If an impact won't get it, do it by hand. Um, they're a mile long, so just stay on them. They'll come out. Uh, and you, when you apply these, you want to leave them kind of loose. Let them slide up and down. Uh, this movement is going to allow us to fine tune the fitment of the upper bumper. And you'll notice these outside slots, um, as well as the slots on the, the bumper itself, and that's going to allow us some in and out movement. So now we have some adjustability. We have some in and out, we have some up and down, and you'll also have supplied shims. And the shims will allow us to adjust it even more. We'll be able to tip it a little bit, and do all sorts of things with it to achieve a really good fitment. Um, we'll get a little bit more into the shims once we start actually putting this together. Okay, so at this point, well, we're gonna make sure we have clearance, make sure all the wires and stuff are out of the way for the new bumper to go in. Um, we're gonna mount to this lug that's right on top. It already has a threaded hole. 
Uh, so we're gonna make sure our wires are out of way of that, make sure they, they go up above. Uh, we're also going to check over here, make sure that this one is free. And it looks like Nick has relocated his sensor up here to that hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and we'll just zip tie this to the harness and it'll be out of the way. Um, after that, we're gonna go ahead and kind of dry fit this thing. We don't have the factory fascia in place. Uh, we're gonna assemble the upper bumper, the three main parts to it, bolt them together. And we're gonna hold this thing up, see how it fits, see if we need to trim any of this upper plastic. Um, and I, I think we will have to trim a little bit of it. Um, we may have to pull this and flip it over so this upper lug doesn't collide with the new fascia going on. Uh, so we'll pull it, flip it over, and we're also gonna go ahead and trim the fender flares. Uh, fender flares are easy. We're just gonna follow the same body line. Just follow it, trim the fender flare off. And we'll worry about reattaching that after everything else is assembled. So easy enough, here we go. <laughs> All right, Joe, you ready? Corners. We'll get that bolt just started. I can probably reach up in there. And I'm going to get this bolt started on the corner. Alright, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this back now, Joe. i got to cut this lug off of here. Lighter and lighter. Dang, where'd that fender go? Oh, that's your snorky. Got it. Let's not cut Nick's snorkel off today. started. I'm just going to kind of leave it loose. I hope it started. Yeah, it started. So we're just going to reach up from the side, get that middle bolt started. And I got it started. It looks good. All right. Just kind of set in place. And again, we're going to finagle all this around. There's room for adjustment. We're gonna Pull on some stuff, move some stuff, get her lined up nice. And uh, again, we're not trying to make things perfect here. We're just getting stuff lined up. Did you have a clip for that end? Or did you just move it? You just moved it over. So this is the back side of it. Uh, this is going to go right to the the uh, right to the main frame. Um, that bolt hole. These guys will go to the bracket on the outside that we applied already. This guy's gonna go up to the corner, up by the fender flares. Uh, pretty easy construction, very simple. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this bolted in place loosely so we can still adjust everything and move everything around. Uh, once we get into a spot we like it, we're gonna tighten it down and then we're gonna remove the whole unit again and uh, get the rest of the factory plastics worked out before we apply it for its final, final fitment. Inch to three inches. I mean, and we yeah. try to keep ours like tighter Minimal. than a quarter. Saying you're like, do you get them with you? Yeah, like, no. I ended up wearing, because I got them two lights that light up my logo. I wear it all in with that. Whatever. We did the yellows and the clears. They look good. Yeah, so we're just kind of, you know, bolting all this stuff in place here and getting an idea where everything's going to go. Yep, we're going to work from the top and go to the bottom. Uh, you'll notice that we supplied a few three-quarter inch long by three-eighths bolts. Um, those you're going to use at the bottom. There's just not clearance, not enough clearance to use an inch and a quarter bolt. So those two short ones you're going to use down here at this bottom corner. And of course, I forgot to grab them, so i got to run next door to shipping and grab a couple bolts. This is why everything is slotted and adjustable. That's what we do. We've got to bolt all this stuff in. Everything needs to kind of wiggle and move around a little bit and get everything to match up and line up right. And... But 
keep working at it. Trust me, it does fit. Oh, that did it right there. We're good. All right, so now that we have everything kind of in place, you get an idea how everything's gonna fit. And uh, this is gonna kind of let us know what else needs to be trimmed. Um, you can see we kind of have the bolt started. We have a little bit of a gap. It's gonna pull in. Uh, we've gone ahead and marked this inner plastic. We need to trim a little bit more off of this, you know, 11 to 13 fascia. Uh, so we'll trim that off. And then we'll remove this entire section, uh, apply the upper. Uh, we're gonna bolt this all together separately when it's off the vehicle, we get it all tight, and we'll be able to put the entire thing up there as one unit. And then we'll be able to work out the inner bracketry to get everything to set perfect. So it's, again, it's a tedious process. It's a lot of on and off, a lot of trimming, um, just not a process for everybody. And, uh, but so far, so good. So we're gonna keep on hacking away at it. Oh, I love watching a grinder wheel go like this when you're cutting. We've got everything trimmed up here, and uh, you can see we've, we've trimmed the bottom plastic and we've reapplied, trimmed the upper and reapplied the upper. It's kind of just sitting in place right now. Um, we did leave this strip here because there is a bit of a, if we go and put the grill back on, there'll be a bit of a gap, and we want this strip to kind of help fill that gap a little bit, and keep that grill in place. Um, pretty straightforward. Just, again, you want to cut a little bit at a time, test fit, and it's, it's, it's tedious, you wanna go on and off, you wanna make sure it's, you're not cutting too much, and there is room for play, so keep that in mind too. Um, it's easier to remove material than it is to add material. I think I've said that over and over, and that's one of the tedious things about this. Um, so at, at this stage, we're gonna go ahead and assemble the three main components of the upper bumper. We're gonna bolt them together, tighten them up. We're gonna put the entire thing on as one unit, uh, we're going to get these two bolts started, get the two on the very outer corner started, and then uh, we'll adjust the internal bracketry a little bit, get it to match up. And once everything's matched up nice, we'll be good to go. Jackson buying black shoes. next year at Windrock. All right, so we've gone ahead and, and put the upper bumper in. 
Um, it takes a little bit of manipulating. You have to use a few shims here and there to get everything right. Um, this being this model year, there's a little bit of a gap up top here. Pretty standard for all bumpers. I mean, all bumpers have a gap. Um, depending on what model year you have, will the, the gap will vary. Um, being the 11 through 13, the grill is bigger and it's sunk in a little more than the 15, the 14 and up. So you'll have a less gap of the 14 and up. Um, a few things we did here was the, the two main mounts that are in here that go to the up and side. Uh, we added a quarter inch, two eighth inch shims for a quarter inch total. And that pushed this out a little bit, but it pulled this corner in. Uh, so the fitment's a lot better. Um, we put a little edge trim up here just so nothing scrapes, kind of fills the gap a little bit. Um, overall, really happy with it. It looks good. It's, uh, you know, these things are not for everybody. They're not gonna, uh, if, if you don't have some general knowledge on, on how things go together and where to use your shims, um, you're gonna struggle. It's gonna be a struggle. Uh, <clears throat> but hopefully this video helps out a lot. Uh, I don't want to discourage anyone from getting one because it is doable. It's just going to take you a lot longer. Uh, I think the three three of us here today that were really working on it, uh, and we started at about 10.30 this morning and it's now 2.30 or so. So it, it, it's going to take some time. Um, be patient with it. Just keep working at it and you'll get it. Um, You'll notice different spots where you put shims or remove shims. It's going to uh, help tilt things or tip things or move things. And you can really achieve a pretty good fitment with just using the shims. Um, so with this install, the only place where we needed some shims were those these two fronts at the main mounts. And uh, we had six eighth inch shims left over. So there's more to play with if you need to use them. Use, but yeah, uh, all we have left here is to get the washer fluid tank installed. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. And it should go really smooth. We've kind of already done all the prep work for it to be there. It was one of the first things we did. And this is gonna just finish this project out. So let's give it a go. You can find the Alpha Primates at www.sixmonkeys.net. Uh, if you have any questions, email the website. It goes directly to me. I'll be able to help you out as much as possible. Look forward to building for you.